Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the Book of Enoch, the Prophet. Part 3, Canto 1, The Universal Laws of the Luminaries. This is the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven as told to Enoch by the holy angel Uriel, because he conducts them. Uriel explained them to Enoch according to their respective classes, their respective powers, periods, names, the places where they commence their progress, their respective monthly cycles, and the whole account of them, according to every year of the world forever, until God determines to create a new heaven, which will be eternal. This is the first law of the luminaries. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. The moon rises and sets also the same. There are six gates for the sun rising. There are six gates for the sun setting. There are three dawns, a golden hour, a blue hour, and daylight. There are three dusks, a golden hour, a blue hour, and night. In the blue hour which follows the three dawns of sunrise, the golden hour of the sun's rays escape in all directions, and the horizon appears as though it is on fire, bursting from the windows through trees and over hills. In the winter months, the nights are longer than the days. In the summer months, the days are longer than the nights. The phases of the sun are twelve. There are six for the daytime and six for night. From the beginning of its phase for daylight, astronomical dawn is 18 degrees below the horizon. Nautical dawn is 12 degrees below the horizon. Civil dawn is six degrees below the horizon. Between civil dawn and the golden hour, the blue hour brings light into the sky without the appearance of any part of the sun. The golden hour comes when the sun breaches the horizon and its rays are spread across the land. The final stage is daylight, with the sun fully above the horizon. From the beginning of the phases for night, daylight gives way to a golden hour, and the sun begins to descend below the horizon. The blue hour is light in the sky without the sun above, or appearing any longer on the horizon. Civil dusk occurs with the sun at 6 degrees below horizon, nautical dusk is at 12 degrees, and astronomical dusk is at 18 degrees. The night has come after these phases with the phases of the moon, and the light from it, and the stars in the sky above. After the observations of the sun and the motions related to it, Enoch came to know the law of an inferior luminary, which all men commonly refer to as the moon, which is an orb the same as all others. Light is given to the moon when it rises, in varying measures similar to the strength of wind. The moon travels through a cycle of change that lasts a month, and it is a cycle of renewal. This cycle is similar to the twelve phases of the sun, but there are only eight phases for the moon. Waning, waxing, gibbous, crescent, new, full, first, and third are the names of all the phases without their combinations. Beginning with the new moon, which is not visible in the sky, the first phase is the waning crescent with light to the left, the darkness mostly to the right of the orb's face. This is followed by the phase of the third, which peaks at the top of the crescent period to have half of the face of this lesser light and darkness and half in light. The phase continues into the region of gibbous, with waning gibbous, similar to waning crescent, except that the light is a greater portion on the left. The waning gibbous gives way to the full moon, whose face is completely lighted for its time. The full moon gives way to waxing gibbous, with darkness on the left in a small portion, and the greater portion of light on the right. The cycle continues with the phase of the first, with half darkness on the left and light on the right. The final stage that follows the half is the waxing crescent, with lesser light on the right, and greater darkness on the left before the moon goes completely dark once again to renew. Such as these are the eight phases of the moon, which is a reflection of the sun, and it is this mirror of the sun which guides us in our journeys for all the nights and days of our lives. After these antediluvian revelations of the movements of the two luminaries over earth, Enoch came to know another progression and regulation which God gave to the law of the moon, the progress of moons and everything related to them, as Uriel, the holy angel who conducted them all, explained to Enoch their stations and he wrote them down. Enoch wrote down their months as they occurred and the appearance of the light until it completed fifteen days. In each of its two seven portions, it completes all its light at rising and setting. On certain months, the moon changes its settings, and on other months, it makes its progress through each phase. In two of its phases, the moon sets with the sun, with those phases that are in the middle, which is the third and fourth phases. From the third phase, the moon goes forth for seven days and makes a circuit. Again, it returns to the phase whence the sun goes forth, and that completes the whole of its light. Then the moon declines from the sun and enters in eight days into the sixth phase returning in seven days to the third phase, from which the sun also goes forth. When the sun proceeds to its fourth phase, the moon goes forth for seven days, until it passes its fifth phase when it returns, again in seven days, until it passes the fifth phase. Again the moon returns in seven days to the fourth phase, and completing all its light, it declines passing on by the first phase in eight days, returning in seven days to the fourth phase, from which the sun goes forth, 
Thus Enoch beheld these stations, being the fixed order of the months the sun rises and sets, at those times there was an excess of thirty days, belonging to the sun in five years. All the days belonging to each year of the five years, when completed, amounted to three hundred and sixty-four days. And to the sun and stars belong six days, six days in each of the five years, with thirty days belonging to them, so that the moon has thirty days less than the sun and stars, and a leap year occurs by this design. The moon in its cycle brings on all the years exactly, so that their stations may come neither too forwards nor too backwards for a single day. However, the years may be changed with correct precision in 364 days. In three years, the days are 1,092. In five years, the days are 1,820. In eight years, the days are 2,912. To the moon alone in three years belongs 1,062 days. In five years, it has 50 days less than the sun, for an addition being made to the 1,062 days. In five years there are 1,770 days, and the days of the moon in eight years are 2,832 days. For its days in eight years are less than those of the sun by 80 days, which 80 days are its diminution in eight years. The year then becomes truly complete according to the station of the moons, and the station of the sun which rise in the different phases, which occur in cycles of 30 days. These are the leaders of the chiefs of the thousands, those which preside over all creation, and over all the stars with the four days, which are added and never separated from the place allotted to them, according to the complete computation of the year, and these servicing four days, which are not computed in the computation of the year, respecting them, men greatly err. For these luminaries truly serve in the mansion of the world, one day in the first gate, one in the third gate, one in the fourth gate, and one in the sixth gate. The harmony of the world becomes complete, every 364th state of it, for the signs, the seasons, the years, and the days, it was for all time that God had made this covenant with men, but it was broken in the sight of the Lord by murderous men who were without God in his mercy. All of these days Uriel showed Enoch, because he was the angel whom the Lord of glory appointed over all the luminaries of heaven, in heaven and upon the earth, that they might rule in the sky and appear in the heavens over the earth, become conductors of the days and nights, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the ministers of heaven, which make their circuit with all the conveyances in heaven. The watchers are watching, and they see the souls of all men. Enoch saw these twelve gates open up for all of the winds, from which they proceed and blow over the earth. Three of them are open in the front of heaven, three in the west, three on the right side of heaven, and three on the left for a total of twelve. The first three are those which are towards the east, three are towards the north, three towards the south, and three are on the west for a total of twelve. From all four of these proceed winds of blessing and health, and from eight of these proceed winds of punishment, when they are sent to destroy the earth and the heavens above it, all its inhabitants and all which are in the waters or on dry land. The first of these twelve winds from the east which inclines southward goes forth as destruction, drought, heat, and perdition, because it is no wind to light air flow. From the second of twelve to the middle of three proceeds equitable benefit, issuing light rain, fruitfulness, healthiness, and dew, being a light breeze and followed by the third, which brings a gentle breeze of good nature, from another of three other gates in the south, through the gates in the middle of them all, comes a grateful odor, dew, rain, health, and life. They are moderate breeze, fresh breeze, and strong breezes. The winds from the west bring dew, rain, blight, and destruction, as moderate gale, fresh gale, and strong gale. After these are the last three of the winds, which are called by names of the sea. These proceed from three gates. The first is that which is on the east, being a whole gale, bringing mist, frost, snow, rain, and dew, the next is from the middle, proceeding southward, bringing storms with heavy frost, snow, rains, and blight. The last of all the twelve winds also has six varying degrees, with this western gate opening to unleash the worst of them all, bringing floods, complete destruction, and even death, as tornadoes and hurricanes, for the purpose of punishment. The account of the twelve gates of the four quarters of heaven is ended. All of their laws, their infliction of punishment, and the health by them, Enoch explained to his son, Methuselah. The first wind is called the eastern, because it is the first. The second wind is called the south, because the most high there descends, and frequently descends there. He who is blessed forever. The western wind has the name of diminution, because there all the heavenly luminaries descend, decline, and become diminished. The fourth wind is called the north, and is divided into three parts. One is for the habitation of man, another for the seas of water, valleys, woods, rivers, shady places, and snow. And the third part contains paradise, in the midst of it surrounded by maelstrom, seven high mountains higher than all others, higher than all the mountains on earth, from which frost proceeds, while days, seasons, and years 
depart and pass away seven rivers upon earth greater than all rivers, one of which takes its course from the west, and into a great sea its waters flow. Two come from the north to the sea, their waters flowing into the Etherean sea on the east. With respect to the remaining four, they take their course in the cavity of the north, and two are poured into a great sea, where also it is said there is a desert. Enoch saw all of these when he traveled with the holy angels above the earth. These instructions Enoch gave to Methuselah, that generations upon generations might know them. The name of the sun is the greater light of perfection. The moon has four names. The first is the full moon, the second is the first quarter, the third is the third quarter, and the fourth is the last quarter, which becomes a new moon. These are the two great luminaries over the earth. All of these orbs are like the orbs of heaven, being the same in their dimensionality, spherical, appearing equally in the sky. In the orb of the sun there is a seventh portion of light, which is added to the moon from it. By measure it is put in until a seventh portion of the light of the sun is departed. They set, enter into their western gates, circuit by the north, and through the eastern gate, go forth over the face of heaven. When the moon rises, it appears in heaven, and the half of a seventh portion of light is in it. In fourteen days, the whole of its light is completed. By three quintuples, light is put into it, until fifteen days its light is completed, according to the signs of the year, because it has three quintuples. The moon has the half of a seventh portion. During its diminution, on the first day, its light decreases a fourteenth part. On the second day, it decreases a thirteenth part. On the third day, it decreases a twelfth part. On the fourth day, an eleventh part. On the fifth day, a tenth part. On the sixth day, a ninth part. On the seventh day, an eighth part. On the eighth day, a seventh part. On the ninth day, a sixth part. On the tenth day, a fifth part. On the eleventh day, it decreases a fourth part. On the twelfth day, it decreases a third part. On the thirteenth day, it decreases a second part. On the fourteenth day, it decreases a first part. On the fifteenth day, the whole remainder of its light is consumed. On a specific month, the month has twenty-nine days. It also has a period of twenty-eight days. Uriel also showed Enoch another regulation how light poured into the moon from the sun. All the time that the moon is in progress with its light, the light is poured into it in the presence of the sun as a reflection until its light is in fourteen days completed in heaven. When it is wholly extinguished, its light is consumed in the heaven, with the earth being the sun and the moon, and this is the day when it is the new moon, for light on that day is received into it, on the side facing the sun. The phase becomes precisely completed on the day that the sun descends into the west, while the moon ascends at night from the east. The moon then shines all the night until the sun rises before the time when the moon disappears in turn before the sun. Where light comes to the moon, there again it decreases until all its light is extinguished, and the days of the moon pass away. Then its orb remains solitary without light. During three months the cycle is thirty days for each month, and during three more months the cycle is twenty-nine days for each month. These are the times in which its cycles decrease, in its first period and in the first gate, namely in one hundred and seventy-seven days, and at the time of its going forth during three months. The moon appears thirty days each and during three more months it appears twenty-nine days. In a night it appears for each twenty days, as the face of a man, and in the day as heaven, for it is nothing else except shadow and light. Now Enoch had shown his son, Methuselah, everything, and on the account of every ordinance of the sun and heavens completed, Enoch showed his son every ordinance expecting these luminaries, which take place at all times and in all seasons under every influence. In all years, at the arrival and under the rule of each, during each month and every week, Enoch showed his sons the decrease of the moon which is effected in the sixth gate, for in that sixth gate is its light consumed. From this one day is the beginning of the month, and its decrease is effected in the sixth gate in its period until a hundred and seventy-seven days are completed. According to the mode of computation by weeks, twenty-five weeks and two days total, its period is less than that of the sun. According to the ordinance of the stars, by five days and one half year precisely, when their visible situation has completed, such is the appearance and likeness of every luminary, which Uriel, the great angel who conducts them, showed to Enoch that he might have this knowledge first. In those days Uriel spoke to Enoch, saying, Behold, I have shown thee all things, O Enoch, all things I have revealed to thee. Thou hast seen the sun, the moon, and those which conduct the stars of heaven, which cause all their operations, seasons and arrivals to earth. In the days of sinners the years shall be shortened, their seed shall be backward in their prolific soil, and everything done on earth shall be subverted, disappearing in its season. The rain will be held back, and heaven will stand still. In those days the fruits of the earth will be late, nor will they flourish in their season. The fruits of the trees will be held back, 
The moon will change its laws, and it will not be seen at its proper phases and times. However, in those days heaven will be seen, and the barrenness shall overtake the place along the borders of the distant nation of the great chariots in the west. Heaven will shine more at that time, compared to when illuminated by the orders of natural cycles, while many chiefs, having authority of the stars, will err by perverting the ways and works of those powers. These lights in the sky and upon the earth will not appear in their normal seasons, because all of those who command them, and those classes of the stars, will be opened and unleashed against sinners. The thoughts of those who dwell on earth will transgress within their minds, and they shall all become perverted in their ways. They will transgress and think themselves gods, that they could defy God's commandments for the naturality of man and woman that they abandon the concept of marriage between men and women by allowing men to marry men and women to marry women and by allowing them to change their sex with surgery while evil will be multiplied among them punishment will come upon them all for their wickedness and sexual immorality so that all of them will be destroyed and suffer a secret punishment for ever and ever thus it is as god commands and has said here in these words plainly stated for all to know part three canto two Enoch's homecoming and guidance for his family. The angel of the Lord came to Enoch and said, O oh, Enoch, look on the book which heaven has gradually dropped down unto you. Read all that is written in it, and understand every part of it. Then Enoch looked on all which was written. He understood all of it, reading all of the book, and everything written in it about all the works of man, and of all the children of flesh upon the earth during the generations of the world. He knew what all of it told, and he knew there was more to all of it than was important to him in his time, because it was the word of God for men on earth in all time to come. Immediately Enoch blessed the Lord, the King of glory, who has thus forever formed the whole workmanship of the world. He glorified the Lord on account of his long suffering and blessings towards the children of the world that he has left this book for them to read. At that time Enoch said, Blessed is the man who shall die righteous and good, against whom no catalogue of crime has been written, and with whom iniquity is not found. Then the three holy watchers came to Enoch and brought him forth from his spiritual rest, placing him once again on earth in physical form at the very door of his family's house. They said to Enoch, Explain everything to Methuselah thy son, and inform all thy children that no flesh shall be justified before the Lord, for he is their creator. It might not have been known to Enoch, who did not have a mirror, that his appearance was not familiar to his family. Enoch's family needed to understand that no human flesh lasts forever, and that God is the Creator, who is capable of making new flesh and filling it with the everlasting spirit of Enoch. During one year we will leave thee with thy children, until you shall again recover your strength, that thou mayest instruct thy family, write all of these things we have shown thee, and explain all of it to thy family. In another year we will return to take thee from them, and thou wilt be joyous and strong in heart. The elect shall point out righteousness to the elect, and the righteous with the righteous shall rejoice, congratulating each other with celebrations. However, the sinners with sinners shall die, and the perverted with the perverted will be drowned. Those who act unrighteously shall die on account of men, and those deeds shall together be on account of the wicked. In those days, the holy angels finished conversing with Enoch, and he returned to be among his sons and family, blessing the Lord of worlds and the universe for having seen much of it while he was with the watchers, who departed the earth in their holy conveyance after dropping him off at his house. Enoch addressed his son, telling him that all these things, all the truths in this book that he wrote for him, and his sons to come, that these antediluvian revelations are his gift to them and future generations. Enoch said, Preserve, my son Methuselah, the books written by thy father, that thou mayest transmit them to future generations. Wisdom I have given to thee, thy children, and posterity, that they may transmit these truths to their children for generations forever. This wisdom will be in their thoughts, so that those who comprehend it may not slumber, but they will hear with their ears that they may learn this wisdom, being deemed worthy of consuming this wholesome food. Blessed are all the righteous, blessed are all who walk the path of angels in righteousness, in whom is found no crime as sinners, when all of their days are numbered. With respect to the progress of the sun in heaven, it enters and goes out of each gate for thirty days. 
with the leaders of the thousand classes of the stars, with four which are added pertaining to the four quarters of the year, which conduct them and accompany them at four periods. Respecting the four archangels, men greatly err, and do not compute them in the computation of every age. Men greatly err respecting them, nor do men know them accurately, that they are in the computation of the year. But indeed these are marked down for ever, one in the first gate, one in the third, one in the fourth, and one in the sixth, so that the year is completed in three hundred and sixty-four days. Enoch's words may have been a prophecy of some great mistake to come. It was in the year 1346 discovered, as such being plundered, that the error of men was great, and they did calumniate the Lord. Pagans plundered the Ark of the Covenant, but they also discarded the truth hidden within the box. Enoch paused for a moment because he knew something that Methuselah would not understand, that men would disagree with this accounting without knowing how it came to be calculated at a distance from the earth itself, and not upon the earth as other men will do, he continues speaking with confidence in his correctness. This computation has truly been stated, and accurately has been calculated, that which is marked down for the luminaries, the months, the fixed periods, the years, and the days. Uriel has explained it all to me, and communicated to me whom the Lord of all creation, on my account, commanded him to explain the laws of light to man of the sun, moon, and stars, that he should tell me to tell all of mankind about all the powers of heaven, which are turned with their respective orbs. This is the law of the stars which set in their places, in their seasons, in their periods, in their days, and in their months. Now that he had emphatically corrected any who might dare to disagree, or to state that there was any different calculation of a year by its days, such that there was a sum not the same as his, Enoch continued with the next of his lessons, Speaking to his son Methuselah, he said, These are the names of those who conduct them, who watch and enter in their seasons according to their ordinance in their periods, in their months, in the times of their influence, and in their stations. Four conductors who separate the four quarters of the year enter first. After these twelve conductors of their own classes who separate the months and the year into three hundred and sixty-four days, with the leaders of a thousand who distinguish between the days, as well as between four additional ones, which as conductors divide the four quarters of the year. These leaders of a thousand are in the midst of the conductors. The conductors are added each behind his station, and their conductors make the separation. These are the names of the parts who separate the four quarters of the year. The great king of the world, divinely inspired, and flowing like a river from God. The names of those who conduct them are rejoicing in the powerful light, taught by God. These are those who follow after the conductors of the classes of stars, each following after three classes, which themselves follow after those conductors of stations, who divide the four quarters of the year. In the first part of the year, the brilliant sun rises and rules, as king of the sky and is named the southern shining one. All the days of his influence during which he rules are ninety-one days. Methuselah understood that these names were of the seasons that came to the earth, but he still listened as Enoch spoke and said, These are the signs of the days which are seen upon the earth. In the days of his influence there is perspiration, heat, and trouble among the kings, those princes of the world who will plot destruction. The trees become fruitful with everything blooming, and growth among the righteous like never before. The corn is harvested, the rose and every species of flowers blossom in the field, and the trees of wintry lies are vanquished. These are the names of the conductors who are behind all of the trouble, the one who claims the power of lightning, his shadow hiding in darkness, and the one who is his dark disciple to follow. The other conductor who follows after them will be the king of the world, whose name they call the Splendid Shining One. All the days of his light are ninety-one days. These are the signs of the days upon earth, heat and drought, while the trees bring forth fruit, warm and concocted, giving their fruits to dry. The flocks follow and ye new kids, all the fruits of the earth are collected, with everything in the fields and the vines trodden. This takes place during the time of his influence. These are their names and orders, and the names of the conductors who are under them, of those who are chiefs of a thousand. In defense of the Lord, the mighty godlike, the name of the traditional leader of a thousand, is the manifestation of God's mighty destroying angel who will reap the earth of all its inhabitants until the days of his influence have been completed. 
Nearly at the end of instructions about the luminaries, Enoch settled back and studied his books. Before beginning to speak some more, he said, And now I have shown thee, my son Methuselah, every sight which I saw prior to thy birth, I will relate another vision, which I saw before I was married, because they resemble each other. The first was when I was learning a book, and the other before I was married to thy mother, I saw a potent vision, and on account of this vision I besought the Lord. I was laying down in the house of my grandfather Malalil, when I saw a vision heaven purifying and snatched away. I felt I was fallen to the earth, and I saw likewise the earth absorbed by a great abyss, with mountains suspended over mountains. Hills were sinking into hill, lofty trees were gliding off their trunks, and all were in the act of being projected and sinking into the abyss. Being alarmed at these things, my voice faltered. I cried out and said, The earth is destroyed. Then my grandfather Malaleel raised me up and said to me, Why dost thou cry out thus, my son, and wherefore dost thou thus lament? I related to him the whole vision which I had seen. He said to me, Confirmed is that which thou hast seen, my son, and potent the vision of thy dream respecting every secret sin of earth, its substance shall sink into the abyss, and a great destruction will take place. Now, my son, rise up and beseech the Lord of glory, for thou art faithful that a remnant may be left upon the earth, and that he would not wholly destroy it. My son, all this calamity upon earth comes down from heaven, and upon earth there will be a great destruction. Then I arose, prayed, and entreated the Lord, writing down my prayer for the generations of the world. Enoch finished explaining everything to his son Methuselah. He went outside and looked up into the heaven to see the sun proceeding from the east, the moon descending to the west, a few scattered stars and everything else which God has known from the beginning. He blessed the Lord of judgment and magnifying him, because he has sent forth the sun from the chambers of the east, that ascending and rising in the face of heaven, it might spring up and pursue the path which has been pointed out to it. Enoch lifted up his hands in righteousness and blessed the holy and great one. He spoke with the breath of his mouth and with a tongue of flesh which God had formed for all the sons of mortal men, that they may speak giving them breath, a mouth, and a tongue to converse with. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the King, great and powerful in thy greatness, Lord of all the creatures of heaven, King of kings, God of the whole world, whose reign, whose kingdom, and whose majesty endure for ever and ever. From generation to generation shall thy dominion exist. All the heavens are thy throne for ever, and all the earth thy footstool for ever and ever. For thou hast made them, and over all thou reigns. No act whatsoever exceeds thy power. With thee wisdom is unchangeable, nor from thy throne and from thy presence is it ever averted. Thou knows all things, sees and hears them. Nothing is concealed from thee, for thou perceives all things. The angels of thy heavens have transgressed, and on mortal flesh shall thy wrath remain until the day of the great judgment. Now then, O God, Lord and mighty King, I entreat thee and beseech thee to grant my prayer that a posterity may be left to me on earth, that the whole human race may not perish, and that the earth may not be left destitute, and destruction take place for ever. O my Lord, let the alien race, which has offended thee, perish from off the earth, but a righteous and upright human race, established for a posterity for ever. Hide not thy face, O Lord, from the prayer of thy servant. Almighty God heard Enoch's plea for mankind, and he determined that there would be a remnant of life that would survive on earth with other innocent creatures. Enoch's great-grandson would be their savior. Noah would become an elect one whose righteousness and faith in God would ensure the survival of the human race. This concludes this episode of Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the book of Enoch the prophet. Be sure to subscribe or follow for notifications of new releases. Thank you for listening. I am Michael.